Good evening. I'm going to put this someplace and uh, you tell me if you can hear it. I'm sorry. Tonight, I just prepared to come in here, uh, but the material for it is that much. Uh, so, so what I'm going to do is basically uh, get you, give you the information you want to know uh, regarding to circulation problems and how to improve circulation, and then. That applies to the heart and apply also to circulation to the carotid arteries, to the legs. And uh, why do we have problem with the circulation? And uh, what symptoms do we have when we have problem with circulation? And then what can we do about it nutritionally? Uh, what can we do about it medically also? Uh, the stuff I am passing around, you see some stuff pass around, it just uh, extra stuff that you can take with you home. In the very end of the lecture also, I'm going to spend the, uh, the second half of the lecture, which probably around 45 minutes, 35 to 45 minutes, discussing food supplements in the whole time. Uh, what we're going to do, we're going to, I'm going to go through each supplement and give you all the details on it. I don't know how many supplements I'm going to cover tonight because uh, this information in front of me is all about food supplements, okay? And, uh, and all the information is being taken about food supplements from the American Board of Holistic Medicine, which I, my board, which we are about, you know, 150 board certified physicians in the country who write books on food supplements and nutrition. And uh, whatever we write is basically we do it to educate the other doctors around the country about it. So this inten our intention was to educate other physicians about food supplements, about nutrition, about acupuncture, about uh, chiropractor medicine, about manual medicine, aroma medicine, kind of, all kind of things they don't know. We teach them how to do it. So we're not going to be able to cover everything, uh, every food supplement, but we will cover as many as I can. Okay. The, uh, the, I'm not going to put slides right away. I'm just going to uh, start with the lecture to tell you that, let me first to see if we have focus. Yeah, we do have focus right here. If we look at the number of people dying from circulation-related disease, what are the circulation-related diseases you know of? Uh, heart disease? Is a circulation-related disease or not? Yes. Valve disease, valvular disease, is it circulation-related or not? Yes. And then uh, strokes, is this circulation-related or not? Yes. Uh, diabetes, does have something to do with circulation or not? Diabetes? Uh-huh, correct. Which is correct, Dad? Okay, please, do not, uh, don't interrupt me when I'm, when I'm talking. Keep your question to the very end. Uh, diabetes also affects circulation. Uh, so these kind of things, we see tremendous rise and a tremendous number of people dying from it every year. And we have adopted in the, in the West a method that uh, different from holistic medicine. We adopted a method that 
don't treat anybody unless they get sick first. Wait until they get sick, then deal with it. Uh, so when you go to a doctor and you feel good, he said oh, he listened to the heart with the stethoscope, and of course the stethoscope is the, one of the most useless piece of equipment because I wear it to make people believe I'm a doctor and also uh, to tell them their heart is working, you know? Because, it, because uh, if you don't wear it, they don't think you're a doctor. Uh, but naturally, we can listen if somebody has pneumonia, but you really don't have to listen. They can tell you they have pneumonia. So uh, that's how we depend on diagnosis. Listen to the heart, do blood test called uh, chemistry or whatever. I said, you're fine, go home. You know, when I used to work at the VA hospital, and they can call me at night or daytime to pronounce, say somebody's not feeling well, uh, good, it looks like in serious trouble. And I go see these people, uh, and we do blood test. And 99.99% of the blood tests come back normal, and the patient dies five minutes later. So what does it tell you? That we are behind in our diagnosis. We're backward in our diagnosis. So since I left Chicago Medical School, since I left the Navy, since I left the VA, I decided to go 100% holistic approach. We're going to assume that everybody have a problem and prove it. Rather than wait until they tell me, I will check them and I tell them. Are you following me or no? This way, the patient feels confident that they don't have to wait until they have a chest pain or they have a stroke or they have sudden death or they have this. We can tell them using Doppler studies, blood studies, uh, uh, cardiolite studies, all these high technical studies we have available in America. We can do it and we can tell this person, listen, you got blockage in your heart, you got a weak muscle, you got a bad valve, you got blockage in the neck, you got this, you got this, you got this, and here is the nutrition, and here's the exercise, and here's what you should do. Then, the nice thing about it, we check them a year later, and 98% of them get better. Uh, did not have to have surgery. So we show them both pictures. This is what you are before, after, with no drugs was very little drugs. That proved then that this disease is increasing like this from 1900 to 2006. The reason behind it, because we have not paid attention to something. What, what, what did we did not pay attention to? Um, maybe, maybe we did not pay attention to the nutrition of the individual. Maybe we didn't pay attention to the genetic, that the person have genetic inheritance that to, for a disease. Maybe infections, somebody might have infection in their system affect the heart. Maybe we don't pay attention to stress, that they have a stressful life, stressful job. Maybe they have too much toxicity in their environment affect the circulation. Are you following me or no? Unless we check those things, we're not going to know the answer. Are you following me or no? We're not going to know because we, uh, you, you basically, you are blind. You, you're misleading the people, telling them you are feeling fine. How many times you, you know somebody was told you go have a physical and then they go and they said you're feeling fine, they go home drop dead. You heard that, right? And uh, some of our best athletes, in America, have died from sudden death. Uh, basketball players, football players, runners, and all of that. Are these people develop disease suddenly, or overnight? Or somebody screwed up and did not check them out? That is what happened. When a doctor plays God, that's when we get in trouble. Because the only person, the only thing, can know exactly what's wrong with us is the creator of us. But us, as a human, we're limited. We make mistakes. You follow me or no? 
So if we recognize that we are limited make mistakes, then we're going to do a better job. If we assume we know everything, then we're going to be arrogant and be in trouble. And that is what's happening right now. Uh, to the point, how many of you, uh, you go to your own physician, tell them you're taking vitamins, they disagree with you. How many of you raise your hand and then there's a, how many? They disagree with you, I tell you, it's not, it's not doing do good, just you're wasting your money. But if you tell him you drink an alcohol, he said, good, it's good for you, a little bit. Uh, if you tell him uh, that I'm taking these drugs, or good, you take, take more. But when you said I'm taking vitamins, are you wasting your money? Why is that? Because that's, to me, intentional. It's not coincidental. Intentionally done, taught in medical school that don't ever look for serious diseases until it happens first. Because once you wait, then the hospital is full, surgery is full, drug company is rich, and then you treat in a, you have a business that lasts you the rest of 20 years, 30 years as a doctor. He's been sick for four years, and that's a big business. And the hospital the same way. There's no other explanation to me for somebody who say vitamins is bad for you or no good for you unless this, that's the only explanation I have in my mind. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think that's what I see among my colleagues. When I tell them about nutrition, they get so angry. And when I start smiling and face them with facts, they said, I'm busy, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> you know, what can you do? You're losing both ways. So the best thing to do when you talk to somebody about nutrition and you don't, don't listen to you, tell them, this is my way, this is your way, <laughs> In 10 years, if you're still alive, we meet again and see if, you, uh, if you're okay or not. That's the only thing you can say, even to your own kids. Teenagers, they don't listen to you, said, okay, fine. I'm going to take care of number one, which is you. You are number two. Your kids number two, number not number one. You are number one. And if number two doesn't listen, tell them, okay, we'll wait and see what happens to you in the future. Yeah. What goes in is going to cause a problem. And, uh, and then uh, that is uh, uh, good advice to give to those kids. So we can actually look at the circulation of the body by having a, a, a skeleton picture of the body that we have done it in all the lectures that's made from bones. And that bones of us, ours, must have circulation. Remember, the lecture is about circulation. So the other titles that you saw in the lecture, I don't have a flyer with me, but I have notes right here. Heart attack, sudden death, cardiac arrhythmia, hypertension. This is all circulation-related problem. There's more, there's more to it than that. So the bone without circulation will be what? Will be weak. Uh, will have osteoporosis. Will have disease. It's not going to make blood. So the blood... The, the bones, they need blood. Then we have also, and if you don't have enough blood, what happens? When you don't have blood, you have fatigue, you have tiredness, you have uh, bad bones, you have all of these things. The other thing is the skin. Does the skin need good circulation? Or no? Yes. Actually, the, the, the more advanced human beings are in, in technology, the more they judge each other with looks. The more primitive they are in jungles or desert, they don't pay attention to looks. Are you following me or not? So in here, you must prove that you look young, you act young, your skin is young. Once it starts looking old, you better watch it. You're going to be laid off. You're not going to get the job. You're not going to get married. You're not going to have any. So the looks of the skin become important. It's a big industry, but the skin also needs what? Circulation. What happens if the skin doesn't get enough circulation? Will, will develop skin cancer? develop psoriasis, develop diseases, develop lots of problems, and then we have problems. 
the other things we have right here, we talked about it in the last lecture we were here, we talked about this organ that some people don't have called the brain. <laughs> and we said in the last lecture that circulation is very important to the brain. And if you don't give enough circulation to the brain, the brain will age and will develop sludge, will develop blockages, and will die slowly. It might even develop disease like Parkinson, might develop multiple sclerosis, might even go even further, you can turn the phone off, uh, might, might even go further than that. You know that the brain can develop even tumors uh, or uh, meningitis, who knows, you can have a problem. So circulation important also to the brain. N now, again, just keep remember when I'm lecturing, do you want to wait until you have a symptom or you want to check it before you have the symptom? Are you following me or no? So if, uh, number two, if you want to have a good physical, tell your doctor, assume that I'm going to have cancer or a stroke or something, and check me out, and then I want to be sure that I don't have that. Now, oh, that's my phone was somebody's phone. Actually, actually, my phone also is on. I better turn my phone off. Take your battery off. No, I just turned it off. <laughs> I pushed the button. Uh, inside the body, there are organs. We have the lung. Have to have good circulation. If we don't have good circulation to the lung, what will happen? You die. You, die. you have emphysema. You have COPD. You have asthma. You have allergies. You, you have all of these things. Then we have also digestive system. You know how important the digestive system are. If you don't have good enough cells in the stomach, how are you going to digest food? You will have heartburn. You will have bloating. You will have indigestion. What happens if the small intestine doesn't have good circulation? You don't have good absorption. You have vitamin deficiency. You have problems with, with, many, with many problems with it. And then you have the large intestine. If that goes bad without circulation, then you have polyps. Then you have cancer. Then you have constipation. You have hemorrhoids. You follow me or no? They all need circulation. So there's, there's other organs in the body need circulation. We're not here to discuss each one of them. But one of them in the back right here, the kidneys, they need also circulation. And some organs also down here, and here, and here, and here, not in the same person. Uh, those organs right here are, need circulation. And so circulation becomes a very important, and the main topic of the lecture, what goes wrong with circulation? What can we do nutritionally about it? So I'm not here to teach you physiology and anatomy and make you a doctor. I'm here to convince you that if you take care of your circulation, you, you're going to do fine. You're going to do really well. And circulation is reversible. We have uh, almost 98% of our patient blockages get reversed. Uh, so that is documented by machineries we use. The, uh, the thing about the arteries, uh, or circulation, we, we, we can use actually this uh, person right here, that we, we know, well, well, it can be either way, but we made the screen dairy. No, I, I make another one cleaner. Okay, this is the heart. The heart is a pump. It pumps blood where? To the arteries. Where the arteries go? To the rest of the body. Correct? Okay. If the pump is bad, then the circulation is what? Poor. It's poor. If the arteries are bad, then also, and the heart is good, the circulation is still bad. Are you following me? So it takes two parts. One, cardio, other is vascular. We call it cardiovascular disease because it takes heart and blood vessels. The heart is easy to diagnose, it's easy to treat, 
but vascular is hard. How, how, how many, how much arteries we have in the human body? We have one million miles of arteries. Those million miles, that pump right here in the chest pumps like this, and it goes for a million miles and come back. If I ask you to design a pump connected to a million mile canal and bring it back, what kind of condition you want to establish? Number one, strong pump, right? Doesn't get tired at all. Number two, arteries, it has absolutely no resistance. Does that make sense or no? Yeah. Uh, almost absolutely no resistance because the more resistance, the more problems. For that reason, and we're going to discuss both the heart and the arteries. Let's start with the heart first. The heart looks like this. It's a piece of muscle. This piece of muscle is divided in half, like that. So this muscle right here, made of lots of cells. And the cells get nutrition and work. How do they get nutrition? Because when the heart pumps blood out through the aorta, there's a small artery comes right here to the left, and that artery is one single artery that goes to the left, the left heart, which is a semi-life of your body is the left heart, and that artery is no bigger than the the lid of a pencil. You understand? So a lid of a pencil, not the tip, just the lid. So that's what really protects us, two millimeters, three millimeters. The people who are atheists or do not believe in God say it's a mistake by God and it's a mistake and eventually evolution will correct it. We say as doctor, there's no mistake at all. This is, this circulation system is perfect system. Uh, we proved that uh, through the history, the human being survived thousands of years. Uh, we proved it also that people with blockage, blockages in our practice, they have less blockage the year after. We proved it that these arteries also, when they get clogged, they make a new arteries around themselves. It's called collateral circulation, if you heard about the word, collateral. Or we tell the patient you have, your arteries have reversibility. It means you have a blockage and you have reversibility. It means your, your body is trying to reverse it. But if we see irreversibility, then we warn the person, your arteries are not reversing itself. We must change the diet. We must do all the diet things to make it reversible again. This artery comes right here, have many branches, and feed the heart muscle. And number one problem with the heart, it can be in the muscle itself. If the muscle itself is weak, the heart doesn't what? Doesn't pump, right, properly. We call that congestive heart failure. That can happen because lack of circulation, number one. Lack of nutrition, number two. Too much LDL, number three. Too much homocysteine, number four. Too much uh, infections, number five. Too much chemicals, number six, and so on. There's so many factors lead to weakness, weakness of the muscle of the heart. So, to correct that muscle, we have to feed it properly. To feed it properly, we must do two things. One, make the cells perfect. Number two, make the artery perfect. Are you following me or no? If the artery is 90% blocked, going to that muscle, naturally you have only 10% blood going to it. So is that good or bad? Yeah. So that is why they are connected to each other. And, Blockage 
of the, of the artery, not necessarily caused by LDL, cholesterol, or homocysteine. It, 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 we're going to be talking about that in September. We're going to be talking about migraine headaches and tension headache and uh, all types of uh, problem related to, to spasm of the arteries. So that is where we're going to be talking because lots of women have this problem and we, we never addressed it before. So we're going to be talking on migraine headaches and multiple sclerosis again because we didn't cover it well last time. So the, uh, the muscle itself, if you take a section of the heart, here's the heart, we're going to cut it in half with a, with a knife. We look at the muscle, we find out this is the left, this is the right. We find the left muscle is what? Larger than the right, you see? How thick that is, how thick that is. Why is that? Exactly, because the left artery, the left ventricle, pushes the blood to the brain, to the legs, far away places. So imagine a giraffe have to push it all the way to the, to the head, or an elephant long way to go. Imagine if a giraffe, how much pressure the heart has to do to put it up there. This is why if a giraffe lay down, we'll have a stroke. Because the pressure on the brain the brain cannot take. Giraffe will never lay down. Will also has to sit up. The head has to be up because the pressure will be too much on the brain. And, and many other anim animals. Some of the animals with long necks like camels and all of that, they can rest by a couple seconds, by maybe about 10 minutes or something like that. Maybe they have arthritis or weakness or something, but they have to sit up right away because the pressure. This left ventricle has to be strong. If we take a section right here of this muscle and magnify it, we find out that the muscle of the heart made of two proteins, two muscles, like this or like that. You can do it sideways, you can do it because the heart has different directions anyway. And how the heart contracts it contracts because these, there is some guy sitting right here with long hands like this, like that. They have hands like that. And then when they get the message from the brain, they shake hands with each other and they grab and they pull. The pulling mechanism right here is influenced with potassium, magnesium, and calcium and salt. So salt is important for the heart, magnesium is important, and potassium and calcium also is important for the heart. But there is a lot more benefits if we have the time, we will go in details about each one of those minerals later on. This is how the heart contracts. So when the heart gets weak, to get it stronger, we must give it what it wants. We must give it the nutrition that it wants. We must remove the toxins that it has. We must kill the germs that it, it could have, like Lyme disease or uh, Coxsackie virus or anything like that. You must remove it from the system. We must remove the homocysteine and LDL and all the stuff that bothering the heart. So the second part of the heart that is very important is the artery itself that supply. That artery I'm gonna wait for because this is the same artery I'm gonna talk about later on through the whole body. So there's no reason to repeat it twice. So I'm gonna skip that one and go inside the heart to see what's going on. Inside the heart, there are wires come like this and electric wire. One goes to the right side, one goes to the left side. The right bundle branch and the left bundle branch, what do they do? It's very interesting to know that in this area of the heart, there are a bunch of cells called the pacemakers. And those pacemakers, cells, is actually non-human cells. They're primitive cells. 
if you take them out, they, they fire, they fire electricity all the time, like a battery, you know, they're firing all the time. They get a message from the brain to fire, but if the message doesn't come from the brain, they will fire on their own. You understand or not? So God did not leave it up to chance that somebody had a stroke and the heart stops. No, the heart can continue on its own by itself. And this group of cells right here, if we actually take them out, they fire all the time and put them in a test tube and give them vitamins and oxygen, they can live for one million, two million years. They would just never die. So we, now we can tell there is miraculous creation inside the human being that we don't know that our some cells can just go forever because the creator wanted that way. Are you following me or no? Now, these wires, can, something can go wrong with it. And if the wire have, if somebody have a heart attack in this area, or this area, or this area, you start having skipping in the heart beats, and that can lead to sudden death. That the person doesn't know he have it, they're running, the heart starts going out of rhythm, and if it is one, it's okay. You know what, you know what I mean by one? One irregular beat. Uh, I'm going to show you the, the, what the beat looks like. This is a regular beat like that. If you have one irregular beat next to a regular beat, followed by regular, 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 there's no problem. But if you have regular, irregular, 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 all it takes eight irregular in a row for the heart to stop. You understand now? Because the irregular is not coming from the pacemaker. It's not controlled from the brain. It's not controlled by the pacemaker. If something is wrong in the heart itself, that the heart is firing on its own. It's not paying attention to the rest of the body. For that reason, if that irregularity happens, uh, the only way to find out about that, if you feel skipping, that's one way, or a uh, 72 hours halter monitor may be able to detect that with exercise. Then when we look at the monitor in our patients, we can tell which patient has sudden death, which patient does not. And the patient who have three or four in a row, or two in a row, we warn them. If that two in a row or three in a row becomes eight, you're going to drop dead. So our goal is to prevent that from happening. So we start them on medication, we start them on vitamins, and we start them on exercise, limited exercise, then we repeat the test three months later. If we see it gone, we give them good report and said, okay, now you do what you want. If it's, if it's continue worse, then we have to try something else. Sometimes we have to put a pacemaker in the heart to prevent that. Even we have to do surgery sometimes. So now, those wires also, they work with nutrition. What makes the wire works are, again, the same minerals. The calcium, the magnesium, the manganese, the potassium, the copper, the selenium, the, the, the CoQ10, the vitamin A, the vitamin C, all these things makes those fire. There is no difference between these wires and the one we spoke about last lecture was what? Alzheimer, remember? It was Alzheimer lecture, right? Okay. <laughs> okay. So that lecture we talked about nerves, 200 billion nerves. Remember when we said 200 billion nerves and each one has 10,000 cells helping that comes to 10,000, uh, I mean uh, uh, 1,000 trillion cells actually from the brain. Remember that? Okay, good. Uh, this is the same wires, require the same feeding, the same supplement, the same everything. Except the others cause misery when you develop Alzheimer. This doesn't cause misery because you have no misery. You don't feel it. You just drop dead. So now, well, this is the, this is the fact. Now, the, 
Number one, we talked about. Number two, we talked about. Number three, we're, we're talking about here. Number four are the valves. The valves allow the heart to push blood from one side to the other and close. It's like doors. Fill, they, they, like this room. It fills in with blood. This door closes. This door opens, and it goes to the body. That's how it works. Sometimes this door jams. Very rarely it does. Oh. Oh, okay. Hmm. Well, it just fell from. Well, we ha it's guaranteed for another 45 minutes. I'm fine. <laughs> we have a warranty for five, 45 minutes. Take from me. I give you your money back if you don't. So, those valves, it's very seldom the blood coming in, it stops coming in. There's no way. You can't stop blood coming to the heart. Because those veins in your legs, those veins in your abdomen, their veins, they're pumping all the time uh, blood to the heart. So those veins in your legs, you think they just sleep? They not sleep. Those veins actually living inside muscles, living inside the muscles. Whenever the muscle contract, it pushes blood to the, to the heart all the time. That's why exercise is very important to get rid of edema and all of this stuff. But the problem is here we're not discussing veins. We are discussing arteries because the blood has to come out of the heart to a million miles, and that valve is the one going to allow to do so, this valve here or this valve here. Now, with age, we find out people have a sludge buildup on the valves. We detect that in lots of patients when we do echocardiogram. Once we see the valve is getting skinnier and skinnier, closing in, and we see a sludge build on it, we have two worries. First worry, it's not enough blood going to the body. Second, the worry is this valve right here, and there is another valve next to it called the aortic valve, it sends the blood directly to the brain. This valve here sends it to the brain. And if it has a sludge build on it, piece of that can go where? To the brain cause stroke. So we get very concerned when we look with this lodge. Because we said, when this is going to break loose? And how far is the brain from the heart? Very, very close. So what do we do? We have discovered that omega-3 fatty acids, the fish oil, stabilizes plaques. You can, have, you can have plaques all over your body, plaques. You know what plaque is. You know the sludge buildup. And they lose. Omega-3 makes it like cement. <coughs> they will not come loose. It's like cement. But in the meantime, so it does prevent stroke that way. In the meantime, you get other things that vitamin B12 and folic acid and uh, vitamin C, they dissolve these plaques. So you get one stabilizing it and the other dissolving it. Are you following me or no? Okay. If you are following me, then we're going to leave the valves and, and, and start the lecture by showing you the arteries, what they look like. The artery is very, very long organ. How long it is again? One million miles. And what's the pressure inside it? I want to just you, I want you to give me the systolic, the upper number. 120 is the minimum, but what we see a lot is 130, 140, 150. 150 of what? What is the definition of that 150? It's 150 pounds per square inch. 150 pounds per square inch is a lot of pressure, right? So this way, the artery is not a vein. It's built from three layers, like tires, three plies, 
It's built that. The first layer made of cells, and that's the most important layer of all, the inside layer. Can somebody guess why this is the most important one? I'm sure you're not, but uh, I'm just throwing a question in case if you do. Because this is called the first layer facing the blood. Being the first layer facing the blood, it has lots of functions. What is the most important function? Stay smooth and lubricated. Do you remember I said we, didn't, we cannot have resistance? So if, if it doesn't, it always secretes hyaluronic acid, always secretes vitamin C, is always secretes things that makes everything mucus, mucus, mucus. You can, even, you can even feel it inside your mouth when you, when you rub your mouth inside. Uh, we don't need resistance when we eat, otherwise when you eat your tongue will go with you. So we have to have a smooth in, you know, inside. And you always secreting something. What is that something you're secreting in your mouth and your eye? Saliva. Saliva made of what? Collagen made of vitamin C, hyaluronic acid. Same thing, the endothelial cells. The endo, oops, okay. Endothelial, endothelial cells are the most important. Because any endothelial malfunction will lead to disaster. And endothelial will only malfunction if nutrition or inflammation attack it. If they get attacked by homocysteine, sludge, build on them, they attacked by LDL, and the, the LDL you get oxidized, you have oxidation in it, or they get attacked by lead or mercury, they get attacked by chlamydia, bacteria, we see lots of chlamydia infection in the arteries, you know, that's bacteria. So the endothelial dysfunction lead to endothelial inflammation. And one of the sheets I gave you, uh, I think I saw you passing that one right there in front of you. Uh, I, that one, uh, I passed it by mistake. I didn't mean it, but that's okay. I'm glad you had it. Uh, that, those are the diseases inside the body caused by inflammation of the endothelium. You don't have to read it now, but see how many of them, right? Just go through, see how serious it is. From, uh, that, that's called endothelial dysfunction. The, the, the second, and, and this cells will meet another group of cells like this in the second layer and those cells in the telia, they lined up in this direction, like that, in an angle like that. They, they, they're inside the artery, but they're going to spiral like that. Are you, are you following me or not? They're not straight down. They spiral going like this because they control the pulse. You know, the pulse is like a heart, like another heart. So the second layer is not important, that important. But it is important to keep the pressure, to keep the artery from blowing up. So it has, it's lined up this way. See the, see the miraculous creation now. The third layer, which is the only three layers by the way, they are circular like that. So the artery that has a pressure of what? 140 over 80, per square inch, it can take that. What happened if these cells here got sick? Let us take one cell and make it sick and see what happened. We're gonna take one cell right here. That's a circulation cell. It's made from a wall, the cell, and a nucleus. The nucleus has what? The D and A in it. And the cytoplasm have the mitochondria for energy and has R and A in it also for transport. Now, these are engines. The engines are runs 
the artery, it's the same angel runs the brain, the same angel runs the liver, the same thing, uh, same cell. Except now we're going to concentrate on the heart and, and the cellular level of the circulation problem. We have a wall, and that wall is not simple wall. That wall made, made, is made mainly from fat, and saturated, and mainly fish oil. 60% of it is fish oil, and 40% olive oil, flaxseed oil, and other oils. So is that important to have oil in the, in the wall? Why is it there? Why the oil is there? I, I explain to you right now. Each piece of oil inside, like omega-3 or flaxseed oil, omega-3 is number one, they have hands like this. One in, one out. One in, out, one in, and so on. What do they do? They have a specific function. Early morning, at 4 o'clock in the morning when you sleep, this guy here, the DNA, wakes up. And he has a little telephone next to him, cellular phone, just like mine. <laughs> and he calls the furnace. This is the furnace called mitochondria. And the furnace has inside it a guy sitting here his name is Mr. ATP, and he fires the furnace. And he sends a message to ATP, tell him we need energy. That person is getting chilly, it's getting cold at 5 in the morning, he's pulling the cover, and, uh, and needs, needs, needs uh, going to go to work pretty soon. We need to heat the body. Temperature of the body starts rising from 96 to 96 and a half, to 97 to 98.5. Then if you stay in bed another four or five hours extra, then you get too hot. Then you have to get up. So in the early, you are cold. Later, you're hot. Are you following me or not? Because the energy is coming out, and you better burn it. Get, get out of bed and exercise or do something. So when he gets the message, he, he also has another phone. There is another guy right here. He looks like this walks like that, and he have a piece of paper in his hand. He gave it to him. His name is RNA Messenger. He's a messenger. He tell him, we need so much fruits, we need so much uh, honey, we need so much uh, sugar, we need so much fat, protein, amino acids, calcium, magnesium, mineral, right, whatever, the whole shopping list. This guy gave it to this guy here the fatty acid. So the fatty acid work and mechanism of sending a message outside to this guy. These guys here, they have also a telephone. They send a message to the brain. Tell the brain, we need food in the blood. And you sleep. So all the vitamins been stored and the food been stored come out of the liver and the fatty cells and they, they, they go in where? In the blood. Because you're not going to wake up at 4 o'clock to eat. So naturally you're going to depend on the stored food. Are you following me or no? So all this food comes in and this guy here grabs it and puts it inside. So the function of omega-3 here and omega-6, mainly omega-3, is transport and me messenger both ways. So the membrane, cellular bed, must be flexible, must be uh, very soft, must be fluid, like it, can, it, it has no rigidity in it. Are you following me or going to sleep? No. Okay, because, because uh, let me see the time. So, yeah, we still have enough time. It's only, we only spoke for one hour. So, in any way, the food goes inside here with the, core, with the enzymes, the food plus enzymes and coenzymes, the burn produces energy plus 
waste. And the waste called in medicine free radicals. And the free radical accumulate inside the cell, but the vitamin C and the E and all those antioxidant, the anti-free radical, they come in and grab it and take it out. So the cell stays clean. What happens if somebody has a deficiency of omega-3? Will have less energy inside. What happens if they have less nutrients in the blood? They will have less energy inside. What happens if they have too much toxins in the cell? Is it becoming flexible or hard? Hard. Is hard cell is good or not good? What do we call hardness in Latin? Sclerosis. So if this has happened in these cells right here, this means these arteries start having sludge built inside it, and we call that arterial sclerosis. Do you see any blockage inside the artery or no? There's none. So arterial sclerosis is number one enemy to us. But the plaques are number two. Because the first thing we develop is hardening of the arteries. So this blood goes to the eye, then we have eye problem, this blood goes to the skin, you know, and, no, and you name it, and you start having cold hands, cold feet, and all of that, and that comes way, way before, before you have plaques. If this continue, then plaques start forming inside the artery itself. We call that what? Atherosclerosis or plaques inside the artery. With this one here, you can do bypass surgery, you can put a stent, you, could, uh, uh, you can use uh, anti anticoagulant, uh, aspirin or something to prevent you know, strokes, but it's only temporary. All this temporary, this plaque eventually is gonna break loose and go to the brain or to the legs or to the eye, eventually it's gonna cause problems, heart attack, whatever. But I want to ask you, if this artery elastic or not elastic? It now it's becoming not elastic, right? So we're going to uh, find a piece of paper right here. Yeah, this is an artery that elastic. Now it's become hard. Now all of a sudden, somebody say we have a fire in this room. You heard it or you saw it, or you smelled it, what do you do? The brain sent a message to the heart to pump fast. The heart has to be elastic, right? It has to go from 80 to 160 in one second. Right or wrong? Otherwise, you're going to stay in the room. And then it pumps blood to where? Through the arteries. The arteries need to be elastic. If they are weak, in one area have aneurysm or rupture. And it pumps to the muscle and the muscle take you outside. So sometimes in those one million miles we find weak spots and the weak spot will, will break. And we have rupture aneurysm or we have, what do we call, what, what I just did breaking the paper in two, in Latin we call that infarction. Myocardial infarction means the heart what? Broke into pieces. And then when we do the cardiolite test, we can see it. We can see the area of scar tissue, scar tissue all over. But you know what? Having confidence in nutrition and holistic medicine, I don't have worries about that. All I have to do with a person with massive problem is to give him a year we buy time with medication and things to prevent sudden death, then work with nutrition and repeat it and we see improvement in a year later. Are you following me or no? That's what we see. Now, uh, I would like to just give you some examples and, uh, of cer certain things that I accumulated here. And most of them, I'm going to skip through it anyway. Okay. Uh, 
I said that the, the main problem in, uh, in circulation problem is inflammation. Uh, and and the, the signal of inflammation, we can see it actually in the paper. I think you have that with you. I'm not sure if you do or not. Yeah. You do? OK. You can see there is a lot of blood tests we can do to detect who's in trouble, who's not. We have C-reactive protein. We have homocysteine. We have tumor necrosis factor. We have SID rate. We have fibrinogen. We have LDL, VLDL, insulin blood level, insulin-resistant diabetes, hemoglobin A1C. We have lots of genetic things we can do. And the nice thing about it is covered by Medicare 100%. But all, it only needs a doctor to order it. But sometimes either laziness is there or just wait and see is there. So this kind of attitude is not helpful. And I wanted to also mention to you that our problem, it did not come from our parents. People think that every problem you, you have, your parents gave it to you. Mm -hmm. uh, it is true we have genetic damage. You're, like your dad might have eaten so much sugar, so much fat. And he gave you a gene that you're sensitive to sugar and fat. Mm -hmm. But his father did not do that. So he, he, your dad acquired it, and you inherited it. Are you following me or no? Yeah. Because Adam and Eve didn't have it in the beginning. So it cannot be genetic. So can we reverse it? Yes. And the answer is, like the gentleman said, is yes, but we need to prove it. We need to prove to you on the DVD we can. So we will uh, we'll, we'll go through that in a minute. The factors that lead to uh, problem with circulation, the nutritional factor, if we compare our diet now to our diet, uh, uh, you know, a thousand years ago, we will find out that we have low potassium. We consume, uh, we consume 150 milli equivalent. Our ancestors consumed 10,000. Uh, we consume uh, nine grams of fibers. Our ancestors consume 100 grams. You know, fibers absorb fat in the guts. So when they ate the deers and they ate the fish, when they ate all of this, and they have the roots and the leaves with it, they, their cholesterol didn't go up, like the Eskimos. The Eskimos, they look very fat, but they have very low cholesterol and very low LDL. Why? They don't even have uh, fibers there. But omega-3, it does the job for them. Uh, so there is so many factors we do wrong, we can correct right here. One of them is the carbohydrate. We consume 50% sugar. They consume 40% whole grain. We, they, we consume 40% saturated fat. They consume 22% good fat. So there are things you can do to improve your outcome. Uh, there are other factors you are exposed to that makes it worse. We have, in the United States, f nuclear fallout. The whole yellow color in front of you are nuclear fallout. Moderate. It says moderate down there. Is moderate large number or small number? Moderate is like a nuclear explosion about a uh, thousand miles away like having permanent explosion a thousand miles, and that's called fallout. And this is released by the Nuclear Energy Commission, that how much fallout all over the United States. And you can see we have, fortunately, vitamin E, potassium iodide, and vitamin C, and CoQ10, and omega-3, all of this counters the radiation, because it is free radicals. Other factors that we, we must uh, consider that our air and water and food is full of free radicals. 
Not only we make it our own free radicals if we don't have enough nutrients, we consume free radicals from outside and all the stuff in front of you causes free radicals and we have anti-free radical supplement right here. Something we have noticed with women that after the age of 45, they start having heart disease. Before that, they didn't. Maybe the estrogen has a protective uh, uh, to that. And soya protein is good at that. And also vitamin B complex is good at that. Uh, because uh, what does soy protein have in it that's good for us? Flavonoids, right? Flavonoids. What is vitamin B2, B2 called? Riboflavin. So the, the vitamin B2 is related to soy proteins, flavonoids still. The same thing. This is why B2 is important in circulation. The, uh, sometimes that stress and, and a person who lives in a polluted environment have autoimmune disease, inflammation that the body attack itself. So the body itself attacking itself and that's the self-destruction we have to counter. It can do that by producing a substance called homocysteine. That if it continue to be produced, can cause dementia and clog the arteries. But if we continue having hardening of the arteries, we can develop what? Hypertension, which is called silent killer. So let's talk about high blood pressure. How many of you, when doctor said, you have high blood pressure, said, no, I don't have it. I went to the doctor, my blood pressure was fine. Your blood pressure has to be taken when you're under stress, when not when you're relaxed. So you have to exercise for 15 minutes or 10 minutes, running or walking, and during that time, check your blood pressure. If it is 170 over 40, you're really doing a good job. If it is 170 over 100, that's poor job. You follow me or no? So it is the low pressure diastolic that we worry about more than the systolic, the high one. We call that the silent killer. That's why we don't trust the, uh, the people who says, I got, uh, I got, my blood pressure is fine. Well, do your blood pressure under stress and see how it is. Do it to yourself under stress or have uh, somebody do it for you. If we, if we continue to have uh, if we continue to have a hardening of the arteries, this is an artery from seven years old a female, she died, and when we did autopsy on her, we see right here the hardening of the artery beginning at seven years old. And, she, and then we see it also, and many, many people in even younger age and the hardening of the artery, it looks like this. So what do you see inside the cells? You see sludge, you see buildup, you see crystals, you see arteriosclerosis. Is that a good sign or no? Of course not. That can lead to hardening of the artery right here, and that artery can look so thick like that, and basically uh, that person, uh, he, I don't know, uh, was 27 years old, he died from a blood clot. This is what the artery itself looked like uh, for a person who, 47 years, right here, and the left leg, the artery in the left leg right there, it has a blood clot in it right there, you see that. 47, and the brain was clotted and he died uh, from other causes, but we discovered that if he didn't die from the bullet, he would have died from his heart. So that, that is the example. This is a 33 years old, and the red means blockage, means plaques. So the whole aorta is, is pla have plaques on it. And this is right here that 
picture that I showed several times, this is the artery that goes to the left side of the heart right here. You see it here, you see it right there. This artery right here is very small. Can you see how small it is compared to the heart? Okay, and that's mine, my heart. My name is right there. And then if we, we, we cannot see really closer right here, but uh, I, may, I may show you in this area right here on that artery, there is a piece of plaque right there. Mm -hmm. And my, art, my own artery. And I have no symptoms. So I start working on it. And then uh, when I repeated it, it shows it's gone. So that was a good, good sign. Now, the plaques can look in, in different shapes and forms, and the arteries can have different blockages, but we're not going to spend lots of time on that because I promised to talk to you about vitamins, so we uh, better skip through the, all of this. I want you to know this until I find... Uh, that the stress test is only accurate in a small percentage. Here's an here's a, a, a arteriogram we've done, not invasive, by, not by, uh, by a surgery, by a machine, and just we're doing screening, and we find a big aneurysm in this person on both sides. So we went inside the brain, and then we cut the aneurysm out and, and, cut, and did it with laser and still alive. Uh, this is another one, had several aneurysm and also still alive because it was uh, taken out. But one thing I want to show you here, some of you, uh, you had, um, you had that uh, article, I think I brought um, uh, American Heart Association article, I don't know if you have it or not. I don't know if I brought enough or not, but does everybody have one or? The big, thick article, uh, it's in the back and the front. Uh, w there's no more, right? OK, anyway. Uh, you have it. If you want a copy of that article, you call my office, and we'll send you one for free, OK, uh, in the mail. You call my office, I give you the number, and we'll send you. The reason I want you to have a copy of that is there is one page in it looks like this. And that page, it shows that when you get exposed to so much free radicals and you counter it with antioxidant, your DNA is OK. When you have deficiency of antioxidant, you start to developing what? Aging, atherosclerosis, you name it. You're going to see it in that. You don't have to look for it now. It's there. It's, it's in it. You look at it at home. Or it is in the DVD. You can, you can watch it. But now, when I said, can we reverse it? The gentleman right here said, yes, we can. I said, let us prove it to the people who are going to see the audience. They're going to see because many doctors are going to say, no, it's not. Mm -hmm. Now we have from Harvard Medical School proof right here that it says right there, there are a number of DNA repair enzymes that remove 99% of the plaques. So the body can use bioflavonoids from soy protein and, uh, and many uh, fruits that has colors in it, like grapes and strawberry. And the darker the fruit, the color, the better it is. Not wine, of course. And if you have to have wine, have wine without alcohol. Because the benefit in wine is great without alcohol. Alcohol is a toxic substance to the body. And you can say, well, our ancestors 10,000 years drank alcohol. Let's, let's assume they did. Well, they didn't have also air pollution, water pollution. They didn't have, they didn't have what we got now. Are you following me or no? Right now, we have so much competition, so much damage from every direction, smoke, inhaler, fumes, this. Why add to it? You know the, the word synergism. You know, you, you know what the word synergism means? Let me show you what synergism means. 
the human cell, this is a picture of a human cell, a real human cell right here. That human cell has lots of work to do. It has a mitochondria, it has a RNA, it has a DNA. If it has chemicals in it, you're producing, plus chemical from the air, plus chemical from the water, plus radiation, then you plus stress, plus you, in, in, you introduce a substance like cigarettes or alcohol or from anything you, you can introduce, we have something called synergism. The cell only can take so much before it starts blowing up. Either the cell will blow up or, or the DNA right here will start what? Mutation that causes cancer. So that's how the DNA will do. We'll start multiplying to two means start being carcinogen. And we have said in the paper in front of you that this inflammation of the arteries can lead to all of these problems that you already have it. We're not gonna talk about that. But I'm gonna talk about the, the slime that you see inside the brain of the, the cell of the brain full of sludge. That sludge can present in the skin by uh, aging spots. So when there is aging spots, there is arteriosclerosis. There is hardening of the arteries. And we have a battle in circulation between the good and bad. What is the good? We need dilatation. The arteries are elastic. We need cells in the body that doesn't grow, become cancer. We have blood that does not make blood clots. We have blood that's anti-inflammatory, doesn't inflame, doesn't get inflamed. And we have antioxidants. What's bad? Constriction, growth promotion, pro-thrombotic, pro-inflammatory, pro-oxidant. And those, are, those will lead to the endothelial dysfunction. That's what I said in the beginning, the most serious problem for circulation called endothelial dysfunction, which will lead to what? All of these diseases caused by the endothelial cells, they're not doing a good job. Now, I, uh, in this article that also with you uh, of American Heart Association, there is also a graph in one of the pictures, you don't have to look for it now, to show under stress and under oxygen, the vitamin C goes down very rapidly. This is why I brought with me, I think in the back, uh, some vitamin C brochures. I believe there is some, right? You can take one when you leave the room. Uh, one day I spoke to you about soy protein, and I told you that the soy protein does lots of good things, but one of the things that I'm I like vitamin, uh, I mean, uh, soy protein to do, it is, it does it, it help circulation, decreases the blood pressure, and then also does lots of good things inside the body. Another substance that is good is cruciferous vegetables. Uh, they have uh, like broccoli, Brussels sprouts, and cauliflowers, and all of those. They have anti-cancer. They also compete for free radicals. And they, in the combination with DHEA, they decrease the blockage inside the body. This is going fast because it is on the screen. And the DHEA replacement, it does decrease inflammation, improve the immune system, decrease depression, decrease rheumatoid arthritis, decrease diabetes, uh, decrease risk of cancer, decrease triglyceride, cholesterol, heart disease, osteoporosis. One of Shackley products has alpha lipoic acid. You probably heard about it. And alpha lipoic acid, it, it has a very strong affinity 
to decrease uh, cholesterol and antioxidant. We have also talked one, a year ago about high blood pressure. How can it be improved with omega-3? Especially the omega guard, the shack they have, is much better than the old one. But you know, I am not going to spend a lot of time in omega-3. I'm only going to summarize it for you that omega-3 is an anti-inflammatory, increases arterial compliance. I don't need to translate that, right? Uh, are you awake? No. OK. Uh, arterial compliance means flex elasticity. It also increases nitrous oxide. Nitrous oxide, that's what they made Viagra from. And that increases that, and, and that allows more circulation to the body. Reduces DMAE, which is a substance that, that blocks arteries. And antithrombogenic, stabilizes atherosclerosis plaque, and so on. It's also antiarrhythmic. People who have sudden death syndrome have a regular heart. Omega-3 will be great for them. A study being shown right here that it does decrease sudden death by 50%. The, uh, it does reduce triglycerides better than statin drugs. Better, much better. Uh, it does also uh, it prevent uh, myocardial infarction, uh, tri uh, omega-3. And actually, the uh, study was done. Let me see if I find it. Uh, uh, it decreased uh, triglyceride by 29% to 30%. But there is one study uh, that I don't have. I didn't put it in. It was, the study was, that the called Honolulu study, which basically went to Honolulu. We had uh, people who smoke uh, 30 cigarettes a day and uh, every single day for so many years. And we divided to two groups. One group received one gram of omega-3 a week, uh, I'm sorry, a day. And the other group, they, they smoked 30 cigarettes and they, and they had one gram of omega-3. And the other did not, smoked but did not take omega-3. The one who took the omega-3 have 50% lower death than the, with, with the cigarette than the one who did not. So that proof that is very important. Sugar is very bad for you. It can cause metabolic syndrome, can clog arteries. And then also we have Oh, there's so much information on omega-3. I don't have the time for all of that. We're just going to skip through it because I have more important stuff to talk about. Alfalfa also right here. I want to let, let you know a little bit about it. Alfalfa, it has lots of flavonoids, lots of steroids, lowers cholesterol, and also is diuretic. It, it does help the heart in many ways. It has antiplatelets. It has BG2 inhibitor, anti-inflammatory. So you can see it, is, it also have lots of minerals. Uh, potassium, the mineral contribute to the heart muscles and promote healing in the heart. It is very important to take the vital mag and you take about two a day and you get your potassium checked before you start. Okay. There are, in our book, the American Heart Association, we have recommended that people with arteriosclerosis, they consume lots of niacin, which you can get it from B-complex, lots of B12 and folic acid and B6, uh, lots of vitamin E, uh, because vitamin E stops LDL, LDL oxidation. They also, you can have nutraceutical support, like uh, red light yeast is good. A plant sterol, like you see, gets in soap palmetto. Soap palmetto also lowers cholesterol, by the way. Omega-3 does. Psyllium does, which you get the, from the fiber. Green tea does, grape seed extract, and soy protein is very good at that also. It does decrease LDL by 13% right here. 
now uh, let's see what else we can uh, we can pack in in the last minute. Uh, there is more information on soy protein here. Let's not bore you with that. Taurine actually is another supplement. It's going to come in the future. You're going to see it with Shackley in the future, and we have it right now. It does help to regulate heartbeats. Optiflora got in the picture somehow because we see that Optiflora also it does lower cholesterol and improves circulation of the intestine. And all these benefits you see right here will be on the screen uh, on the DVD. Now I like to uh, talk about stress relief complex. It has theanine, tyrosine, uh, beta cesterol, and all of this products that the anti-diabetic, the anti-cholesterol, that uh, they improve congestive heart failure. Uh, so you can see some products that Shaq may have for something, it can be used for something else. So in our patients, sometimes we use a product for something else because it, it's a good way to deliver uh, something without giving too much medication. Like acuity, for example, I know it gives you lots of memory and brain uh, thing, but acuity also allows more circulation. Uh, as you can see, it goes vasodilatations right here that is important to the brain. The uh, glucose regulation also put itself in the picture because it has lots of product. It has uh, the chromium, it has the GTP, they have the, all, uh, uh, all these things that it does help the body to decrease the LDL and decrease blood pressure and decrease triglycerides. So, zinc. Uh, this is all my handwriting, so you can uh, see that I have difficulty reading it myself. Uh, so uh, zinc have a lot to do with the, with the heart health. And also potassium. Here is a little bit more information on potassium, more than the just one I mentioned before, because potassium incre increase, increase fluid balance, acid base, muscle function, which is a heart as a muscle, 98% intracellular, it's, it's depleted with age, it, it works on the sodium, it works on the nerves, it works on the muscle, it regulates rhythm, regulates blood pressure, regulates sugar, regulates insulin, so that potassium, with you don't forget that you consume more of it. Magnesium, potassium, chromium, it's in uh, glucose regulation, it does also lower, uh, increases the HDL inside the body, and then uh, we have also selenium, which is a very powerful antioxidant for the liver, uh, glutathione, but it, it decreases heart disease. It has lots of other benefits also to protect the body against inflammation. You're not going to be able to take notes of everything I write, but uh, sodium or salt, if you have decrease of salt, you will have muscle cramps. If you, if you have decrease of salt, you will have nausea, you have headache, you have nerve problem, you have decreased nerve function, uh, you, get, you gain weight if you have low salt because your carbohydrate metabolism goes to fat. You lose a lot of the sweats and tears and bile and digestive system and you consume, you need about 100 grams a day uh, which, you know, which you can calculate that. So the sodium, there's a lots of people eating salt-free diet. You, you cause it more harmful to yourself than help. Manganese is, comes with, uh, with Shackley products and also minerals. We're just going to cover a little bit of minerals and we have, we passed by five minutes, so I thought we have five minutes. Calcium is very important. It's the most abundant in the body. It does help the heart muscle to contract. It prevents sudden death. It lowers the blood pressure. The, another thing is very good. Uh, oh, up the floor also came in the picture, and I'm not going to talk about it. I don't know how I did that. Lecithin also was in the picture. And, and then we will... Uh, Beta-carotene. 
Beta carotene is good for lots of the eyes and the brain and all of that, but beta carotene also make the arteries more elastic. It helps against blood pressure. Folic acid, which is in the B complex group, in Shackley, uh, it does lots of good inside the body, include improved circulation. Vitamin B complex, it does all kind of things. It does improve energy, improve nerves, muscles, sugar, digestion, growth, brain, heart, neuropathy, weakness, coordination, edema, heart failure, mood problem, mental problem, mental uh, alcoholism, and so on. B complex also increases energy and fatigue and healing and all of these things. B3 improves the inflammation, LDL, blood pressure circulation, and uh, uh, B5, which is a, a very important against homocysteine. It's important, it decreases LDL, improves the circulation. Vitamin B6 is well known of that. It does help against homocysteine, also improves circulation. And B12 is the king of all because it does lots of uh, things uh, inside the body beside that. One of the things uh, very important to you, I, I came across, uh, uh, I came across uh, uh, this thing right here when I was in London that was selling old steel advertisement the last hundred years. That's like collection. I go collect antiques and things like that. And I saw that and I thought that was really interesting. Uh, this was hang, used to be hanging in the doctor offices in England in the last hundred years. That there are medicine that cures everything. Mm -hmm. It's called the snake oil. Okay, you heard about that. So what I, the reason I put that here because be careful when people approach you about new products that it does miracles. There is no product that does miracles, and there is no product that does everything. And the more they tell you it does, the more you be cautious. So the more they talk, the more you don't listen. Are you following me or not? There is lots of deceiving going on. And when we ask them to prove it, they cannot prove it. How do I prove it when I, when I do things? How do I prove mine? In the, very end, I do, in the very end right here, always in the end of the lecture, I will put... The, all the, I will put all the literature that I have accumulated my information for, for the lecture, like the lecture tonight, I will put it uh, to the people on the screen so they can actually check on me and go to the reference, see if I'm telling the truth or not. Okay, this is, uh, this is reference. Uh, four of them of the lecture we talk about tonight. You're not going to read every one because there's a lot more coming. And this is now 19 articles. By the way, all of these articles only on food supplements and health, not medicine. Just as food supplements. This is American Holistic Medical Association work. You know, 19 articles so far to prove, prove food supplement and nutrition works for circulation. Now, we, the doctor said we have no proof. You, you're wasting your money. He's now 33 articles. Okay, he can look in the internet. We can get it in the DVD, but he might not convince all the way. We give him more. There's 46 articles. And then, if we don't, doesn't have difficulty believing, to go to 59 articles and so on. And I'm gonna just go fast to show you how extensive it is, nutrition important in our health, and uh, now we have reached 88 articles, and if you get it on a DVD and you pause it, you'd be surprised. You become the doctor of your own house. You become the leader of your own life. You don't need me, you don't need somebody to tell you what to do, because you've got the proof right there. Are you following me or not? And you can help others. That's objective of us being in this earth. Worship God and stay healthy and help each other. And here is 102 articles. And then uh, 
116 and 130. And I, I hesitated doing that, but I decided to do it. 146 articles and 161 articles, 175 articles. So we have more articles done on our nutrition than they did on the drugs, actually. But you don't know about it. And the doctor doesn't know about it. That's 189 articles already. And now we reach 202 paper published. And we have 228. And goes on and up to the last one, 231 article I reviewed for the lecture tonight to see what should we talk about. So I'm done with the lecture. I'm going to give you my phone number for the people that have to leave. And then I'm going to take some questions. My phone number is 847-356-9009. That's my office. Or my cellular number is 847-571-3914. That's my cell. And then you can call me if you have a personal question. Now I'm going to be taking some questions from the front to the back. Oh, that thing is still connected. OK. And, uh, and then uh, keep your question related to the lecture itself. Yes? How bad is low blood pressure? Low blood pressure is not bad. Yeah. It's a good thing to have, uh, as long as it's not caused by congestive heart failure or other diseases. But the high pressure is the silent killer, not the lower pressure. 